know, what, what, what made this channel mediocre at best in the first place? We picked up some new subscribers recently, which has been pretty cool. Probably on the back of some decent race videos that kind of showed the inside of racing and that stuff. That's not what this channel is about. This channel is about an old bloke riding around, talking to a camera, and making no sense at all. So I thought we should bring back some of this original content. No, seriously, actually, I was going to do sort of a review about that state champs race because it was really hard to kind of get the story of the race across, just the nature of everything. But you guys asked some really interesting questions about it. Um, and so I thought, well, let's, let's actually have a chat about it. Actually, before I say this, there's been mention recently that I've been cutting this guy out of the vlog. It's, it's true. It's true, I have been. Has that been by design? Yes. Basically because he's been getting way too big for his boots. Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> he's, uh, people are commenting directly to him. Let's get this straight. This is my vlog. Thank you. Almost died again. <laughs> I am the captain of this vlog. And anyone else is definitely secondary. Thanks, Mark. Yes, I'm referring to him. Where is he? No, he's hiding. There he is. That guy. So he was in that bunch with us. Let's have a little chat about it. future okay so so the break of four got away got almost three minutes right we're not then trying to just go to the front of the peloton and bring the whole thing back we've got to try and get away ourselves which eventually happened happened on the back of some hard riding up the the berg and just general fatigue like I think it was 80 k's in maybe yeah. finally got away so okay small group six or seven and the question was how we got those guys to start working. We're just chatting about it there and his kind of comment was, set the tone. Do turns yourself at the beginning. Don't sit at the back and say, come on guys, roll turns. Set the tone yourself. Yeah, like you sort of got to put your cards on the table. If you're rolling through and you're willing to work, the other riders in the group will see that you're willing to put the energy in and then they're more likely to match you. The makeup of the group's important. You know, obviously people with similar interests. That means people who want to bridge to the front of the race. Like, you can maybe take one hanger on, but two or three, no, nah, that's gonna kill, kill the vibe of the group. It's not gonna work. And with that one hanger on, you just gotta shut them out of your brain. Is that it? Yeah. The minute you start thinking, oh, we're just gonna take this guy to the finish line, well, you're gone, you're doomed. We had one rider sitting on the group who had a teammate up the road in the break, so he's obviously not gonna work. Um, and when we were rolling, there was a comment from another rider saying, should we try and get rid of that guy that's sitting on? Um, if that person's been sitting on not doing any work, they're probably gonna be the freshest out of the group. So trying to attack and get rid of them, firstly isn't gonna work, and secondly, just goes against your interest. Because if you start doing that, chances are you're not going to reach the final of the race. Hmm. So you have to try and shut that person out and race positively. Get to the front of the race, catch the break, and then you can start attacking. There's no point attacking when you're three minutes behind. I've just managed to hold on to one of the best time trialists in the country's wheel and get some quality footage. I'm sorry. I'll give you credit for that. Thank you. That is, so, there you go. He never gives me credit, he just gave me credit. The gap's down to a minute and a half and we still may not catch, but we're getting near the catch. So the dynamic in the group really shifts at that point. And look, Clint won't mind me pointing this out, but so the guy who came third, Oliver's rider, Clint, he started missing turns. Um, and not because he was particularly tired, but tactically. No issue with that. Look, 
I even, when I was giving out to him, he just said, well, Chris, it's bike racing, which it is. Double-edged sword, right? Because on one half, he's obviously it worked for him and we got across and he was fresh and he, he got on the podium. The other half is, if we all start doing that, well, we're not going to make the bridge. So I kind of think at this point, it's a bit like setting that tone early is really important, but also you've got to be a little bit careful about getting a reputation for that because especially if you're a breakaway guy, and we were just saying this before with Jesse, but especially if you're a breakaway guy and your way to win a race is to be in a breakaway, if every time you get in a breakaway and you start getting close to the finish line you're sitting on, people remember that. If you're a sprinter, it's different. If you're brought to the finish, well, you know what you're going to get. But cycling sort of community is probably small enough that that kind of info gets around. And I've just outed Clint. <laughs> He's not normally like that. Do you want to say anything about Grafton, Jesse? No. Uh, no. So, yeah. Look like I alluded to the other day. No, I do. Grafton is a thing. It's coming up. It's big. Yeah, just, just it's yeah. Pretty attacking. Sit and go towards the end. Go with the move. Uh, look, and some people asked about training stuff for Grafton. Well, to be honest, if your training starts now for Grafton, you know you're not gonna get there. So if you don't know, Grafton's got for the NRS guys uh, about 40 to 42 minute climb, div two, div three. 45 to 55 minute climb. The only issue is that the climb's 80 kilometers into the race. So if you can get your 45 to 55 minute power up, absolute power that is when you're fresh, then you're gonna put yourself in good shape for the climb. If you're trying to practice 40 minute efforts, 80K into a ride, you might get away with that on the weekend, but most people won't fit that in during their week. So try not to worry too much about that. And if your absolute 45 to 50 minute power gets up, that'll carry over to 80 kilometers into the race. No one's gonna win the race there, but it's basically a hurdle where you need to be able to climb at a speed to get you in the group you wanna be in. Calder's only about a minute behind with a bigger group. So for example, in Div 2, there's a big mix of ability. So you'll have guys there that are climbing close to NRS pace. So mid 40 minutes, then there'll be guys around 48 to 49 minutes, guys 52 to 53 minutes. So it's really vital that if you want to be in a front group in your division, you need to be able to get over that climb at that said speed. We, we'll do a, a dedicated graft and obviously race one, but we'll do a preview because I think it deserves it. It's an epic race. It's not a Fondo, it's a race. Uh, car back. Safer at home, I think. <laughs> Do you like Vegemite? Yeah. No, Catherine no. likes it. Catherine, you like Vegemite, don't you? And I like peanut butter. You like peanut butter. Where are we going today? The zoo. The where? The zoo. The zoo. And monkeys. Monkeys? Yes. And, well, thank you. Welcome. Platypuses? Yes. Yeah. And what sound do a platypus make? No. I don't know. And giraffes. It was a really good race. Like it was a really good race and it was a really good race by the riders. But there was a few things that kind of went missing throughout the day. And, and so Liz and I sat down and sort of came up with a, a few thoughts on the whole thing and how to improve it. Because unfortunately it did fall again into that kind of category of a really good race that was invisible.
There was just some really obvious things that were like kind of some gaps in the way that event happened that I reckon could be easily fixed. For example, so Crafty who was commentating the event and he was doing an amazing job, like he's keeping the whole thing going, but he's not getting any info. So whilst you had the commissaires like with the lead group, while you had the commissaires with the, the peloton, there's no feedback, there was no communication between them and him. So it was interesting watching the video back, you know, they're talking about what's going on in the race and I'm there going, that's not what's happening in the race. I was in the race. I know that's not happening. Two aspects that I reckon could have been really, and this could, thank you very much. This could, this could improve two aspects, heaps. One perspective, the people on the hill who were there watching the race, you know, Crafty is trying to tell the story of it. A simple link between the commissaires and the person telling the story or the crowd that's simple do that and you have you have an experience with people who are watching the race and quite an interesting one the other one is the invisible nature of the race beyond being there so again you had commissaires in the car you had people in the cars that were watching this race simply just tweeting out instagram something what was going on in this event like when it all came together you know what have been cool is like you know a tweet goes out the race has come together there's 15 k's to go list the 10 people who were there and who's gonna win you know you could get some real interest and banter going i remember when we did la tap a couple of years ago and we're going up the lockup and um going up there and the lead car came up to me and he was like what's your instagram handle what's your twitter handle we'll, we'll send it out now and they like instantaneously like as the the, the events unfolding that the info is going out and people are like oh shit, this is happening oh wow okay I'll, I'll i'll pay attention for the next hour and see how it sort of ends that kind of thing that's you know how cool would have that been on a sunday afternoon people would have been sitting around going oh i'm getting live twitter updates of the state champs wonder who's going to win oh it's all come together with 10 k's to go you know that kind of thing and that's simple that's simple guys and i'm not turning this into a, a rant about any sort of governing body or anything i mean this is something that we can do collectively to, to make this race not invisible That was actually bizarrely fun, believe it or not. Normally a zoo person, anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna stay on this. I really wanna stay on this. And not because I wanna turn this into a ranty about governing bodies thing, but because this is all linked to what I said the other day about trying to get motorists to see us as athletes. And part of that is to have the races that we do be visible because if, you know, the motorist sees this stuff on the social media or, or it starts to become entertaining enough that they want to see it, then they will therefore see us as the athletes rather than the cockroaches. Okay. And finally, a shout out. A shout out to Neil McLaggen, who's probably currently somewhere on the M4, unfortunately, but he's ridden all the way from Perth to Sydney for something called Crossing for a Cause. Check out his website, just Google Crossing for a Cause. He's doing it to raise awareness for type 1 diabetes, which is awesome. I kind of think with these guys, you know, check out his website, but the thing with these things, the people that do them, they're either insane or just incredibly passionate for the cause that they're actually pursuing. Haven't worked you out yet, Neil. I'm thinking it's a little bit of both. Mostly the insane. Passionate as well. 
mostly inside. See you. Thank you.